Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am Linda Hadley, and for those of you I don't know, I uh, have the pleasure of serving as Dean of the Turner College of Business, and I want to welcome you to uh, this session of our Executive Speaker Series. We are very fortunate today to have not only uh, a great executive and a great speaker, but we have one of our own. We have a Turner College alum speaking to you this morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Janet Davis. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree in accounting with the minor in finance. Uh, graduated, may I say the year? Yes. All right. Uh, she graduated from CSU in 1981, and she went to work for the TIC Credit Union in 1983. Uh, at that time, TIC Credit Union was a very small credit union that was located at Fort Benning, and I think they only had one branch at that time. Uh, very small credit union. And um, over the years, she has built that credit union into something that is really fantastic. Now they have uh, like over 40,000 members and uh, over $300 million uh, in assets. Uh, she has been, you, you have served as the president and CEO <laughs> of the Connecticut Credit Union since 1991. And much of this growth, uh, most of this growth and development has been under her, under her leadership. Uh, Ms. Davis is uh, not only an alum of CSU, but she is also she also serves on the foundation board here at CSU. Uh, she has been uh, an outstanding alum, a volunteer for CSU, uh, and very supportive of the university. In addition to the CSU foundation board, she serves on the board of the Georgia Credit Union affiliates, and was actually inducted into their Hall of Fame in 2009. 2009. She serves on the MEEF board. MEEF is the Muskogee Educational Excellence Foundation board. So she really does have a passion for the quality of education in our community. And she is also a member of the Downtown Rotary Club. I'd like to welcome to you Ms. Janet Davis, uh, President and CEO of the TIC Federal Credit Union. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much, Linda. I do appreciate the opportunity to be with you and to see each one of you. I've gotten to talk to a few of you. Um, I appreciate your time this morning. It is an exciting uh, time for me to be back in the School of Business. It has been a while since I have been here. And so what I'd like to do today is to talk to you a little bit about myself, talk to you a little bit about um, credit unions cooperatives so that you understand that side of finance, talk uh, more specifically about Kinetic and some of the journey that we have been on and that we will continue to go on. And then um, we'll talk to you a little bit about my opinion of what it takes to be a successful candidate, have a positive outlook on your career so that you make uh, the best of your life as you go forward. And then we'll open up for some, um, some questions. So does that sound okay with you guys? All right. So let's get started. Linda did a great job already talking a little bit about me, um, but I am from Columbus, Georgia. Let's see. Maybe I am. I love, I, this is one of those things that you ever get the opportunity, I just love to be able to have clickers. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I am from Columbus, Georgia, home, homegrown, a local girl. Uh, I went through the Muskogee County um, school system, public education, then went to Kendrick High School. Graduated in 1977. Linda asked about my years. I am very proud to have made it this far in life. <laughs> so I am okay with that about my age. Uh, graduated in 1977, and um, I am the president and CEO of Kinetic Credit Union and a proud CSU alumni. Um, when I went to Columbus College back in the day, um, I don't know how I felt about it at that particular time because it was like a community college and so forth. But what it is today is a tremendous difference. And you guys know it because you're here. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I got my bachelor's in accounting and a minor in finance. I had the opportunity to talk to someone a few minutes ago. It says, well, you know, I'm debating about the finance side of it. Should I be doing something different? I went through um, in the counting side and then thought, mm, I needed to add something else. I did not know if I wanted to be a CPA and go through, go through life doing that. But I am a local girl and let you know that. And um, so to be here with you today as a, an alumni is really very special. I joined Kinetic, formerly TIC, in 83 and uh, became the president in 91. 
So if you asked me some 34 years ago, if I would have be asked to speak in front of you guys at the Turner College of Business uh, at the executive series, my first response probably would have been, you've got to be kidding. I didn't like speech class. I didn't like public speaking. I didn't like anything. And then I had to think back, you know, at your age and looking back at the time, I really didn't know what the future held for me. And I really, really um, aspired to do some great things. But, you know, I was just trying to make a, an A or a B or at least pass a class, trying to get through whatever that might look like and uh, to do that. And so, um, those days were a lot different and a lot of different ways. And I'm not going to talk about the olden days. My employees say, oh, please don't go back to the olden days and talk about what it was like. But what I did know at that time is that I wanted a bright future in whichever direction that I possibly went. My parents instilled in me uh, a value system, and I'm sure your parents did, and you've probably had mentors in, in life that have instilled a value system. And that value system was to do my best at whatever I was given the opportunity to do and to have a passion for life. And uh, I think as you get to know me today, you're going to know passion is my favorite thing. And it's one of our business values, but it is one of the things that I think that drives me day in, day out. Um, at that time, I also thought about the world and trying to figure out what my future might would be. And um, I was cocky enough and confident enough that I felt like I could do anything that I wanted to do. If you think about the timing and you go back to those times, um, women, and I love seeing all the women in the class, probably weren't in as business as much as they are today and where we're going. But I knew that as a female that I was going to do my best and, and being a female was not going to be one of those things that I was given because I was a female, I wanted to earn everything that I had the opportunity to do. One of the successes that I, I attribute to my passion for life and so forth is continuous improvement. Uh, keeping a positive attitude uh, led me to believe I could do anything and be anything that I wanted. And I guess at that time, when I was in school at Columbus College, I was naive enough to believe I could conquer the world. And so that began my career and uh, moving forward. So. As I um, joined Columbus College, I had big dreams and aspirations. You know, you've graduated from high school, and man, this is really awesome. I wanted to be a doctor. Had no desire for anything else but to be a doctor. I just knew people that had parents as a doctor, and they made good money. Okay, so that was my bigger dream, and I was going to come to Columbus College and work um, to get my degree, and then move on to medical school, um, all while working as a part-time teller at a local bank. And I had to do that to pay my way through school. And I, I feel very blessed that I had that opportunity. It was certainly a juggling act trying to work and to go to school, but it gave me something to, um, to connect to. Uh, as I was going through the um, uh, medical field pathway and so forth, it, things were just not really clicking for me. And I don't know if you've had that opportunity. When you get out of high school, they want you to declare a major, decide which direction you wanted to go. So for me, uh, I started talking to some people and had some influences that said, maybe you ought to just back off from the sciences and the chemistry, all the good fun stuff, and see if maybe accounting might would be a class, a business class. So that's what I did. I backed off and I went, took a couple of cla uh, classes. And I would tell you, as you go through your studies, you want to be sure you find the right class and, uh, and get the right passion for you. Um, so as I got into accounting, um, I am a perfectionist. Most accountants, one and one always equals two. I was speaking with a young lady back in the back, you know, and about marketing. You know, marketing wasn't one of those things I really liked in college because that's so abstract. You couldn't measure it, but one and one was always two. And so I got into accounting. I found out I was pretty good at it and, uh, had, and began the classes, and that's how I how I got into accounting as in a major. And, um, and looking back, I found my passion pretty early and I stuck with my passion. So I encourage you as you go through this part of your career, look for your passion and it gave me the opportunity to grow a career. Um, reflecting back on my senior year at Columbus College, uh, the Dean of Business at that time was Dr. Alice Embry. And we had a Management 475 class. And uh, we took it for one quarter. We were on a quarter system. And we got together in a classroom, and it was a very open environment. And we worked together as a team. And we had to run a company. And our company was Holiday Inn. 
And so for the whole quarter, we dived into the Holiday Inn. I guess we did pretty good. They're still in existence today, but they didn't ask any of our opinions. But um, so we worked through that. And I remember thinking when I'm taking this class, because I'm, you know, I'm an accountant ma- you know, accounting major, you know, how is this going to help me? And uh, what am I going to do with this as I, I get the opportunity to go forward? I'm not from a prominent family. I don't have a family that um, I have on, you know, I could move into a family business. Um, I didn't know if I'd ever own my own company or even be the CEO of of my own company. I just knew with accounting and finance that I'd have the opportunity to play a large role in any company because finance drives whichever direction that you're going and it tells you what you're doing and it measures it. Um, So I knew that um, as I was going through with my passion that I could only control the things I can control. How many times do you just look and say, life is just not fair, things are just dumped on me, you know, and I'm mean, sure as you're work, getting ready for finals or midterms or whatever you're doing, you just think, gosh, you know, I've just got so much on my plate. There's only so many things that you can control in life. Have you ever heard that? You know, you just got to control the things you can. So for me, in controlling my life is my apti- attitude and my aptitude will determine the altitude. And I love to tell my employees this, because when you have employees, they do look at you and say, well, you know, that's just not fair. I didn't get this job, I didn't get that job. Life's not fair, but to be successful in life, you have to work hard to achieve what you, what you achieve. Um, your attitude's gonna determine, in my opinion, how you handle things. It's gonna put a brake on what you're doing, or it's gonna give you the engine going forward, and it does stand out to an employer. So I encourage you, to, depending on your attitude, attitude and uh, we all need attitude adjustments from time to time including myself but it is one of the things that I can control Uh, your aptitude is what you know you're born with some talents you know we have some uh, athletes here they have tennis and some other talents here that you're born with musical talents but uh, what you do to continuously develop and to grow is what you can control and it will determine the altitude that you soar I call these my three A's because they are very critical for me personally and I allow that to let me know that I want to soar with the eagles okay Uh, so as I aspired in what I've told you already larger than life I had the biggest of ideas but man I got knocked down in a lot of different ways but I realized how I controlled my attitude my aptitude will determine the altitude that um, that I soar to so I'm really proud of, um, I think I, I maintain a positive attitude. That's passion of life. It helps me soar with the eagles as I go forward. So let me talk to you a little bit about financial services and cooperatives. Credit unions are cooperatives. And I, you've probably studied, if you've studied some finance, that what credit unions are about. But for personally and professionally, credit unions have allowed me a great future and a great career that I've been passionate about. Um, Credit unions are part of a cooperative, and the big difference in cooperatives and other for-profit organizations is that the common theme that unites cooperatives is a governance structure that is grounded in people being served, not third-party stakeholders whose interests are solely for the returns of their capital investments. Okay, so we take our investments and reinvest them in our company for our members, our customers, where a for-profit takes those um, profits and gives them to shareholders. So going forward, our sole purpose as a credit union is to help people afford life. And for me and my passion of life, I I resonated with that of people helping people very closely and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Credit unions have four basic principles that um, I think guide and direct us that make us different than our for-profit brethren out there. Uh, We have members, not customers. Uh, By joining a credit union, people own the credit union. Each person gets a vote. Uh, Each person has respect and and is treated individually as a um, as a customer. Um, Our democratic control is that we have a voting process where our volunteer board of directors are elected from our membership. They have one vote for each membership, not a vote per share that you have. Uh, Service differentiates us, and um, we're going to talk a little bit more as we go through the legacy of of what we've done at TIC to turn through uh, Kinetic. But service is one of those things that we think differentiates us because we are solely driven toward helping our members better their lives and helping them uh, afford life. Our profits belong to our members. 
So whenever we make money, we have to build capital with our money. We don't take in deposits or, or, or non-member deposits for capital. We have to actually earn our capital. And so that's the four driving principles of a credit union. And so helping people afford life is why we do what we do. Um, Little did you know, and little did I know back in May when uh, Dr. Hadley asked me to speak today, but this is International Credit Union Week. Hey, it's about people helping people is our theme. And, uh, and so it's a special week for credit union land and, uh, and what we do. And on Thursday is actually the day, the, th um, the third Thursday of October since 1948 we've celebrated. So you are joining the celebration today as we kick off this week. Uh, since 1948, we have 57,000 credit unions worldwide, serving 217,000 members in 105 countries, uh, embracing the philosophies that people can improve their lives by working together. And that's the people helping people. I, I share with all my new employees as they come to work for me. I don't know of another career that would have met my passion more than helping people. Uh, you know, in the mornings when you get up and you think, man, you know, just gosh, it's raining and I'm going to have to park a mile because parking's tough at school or whatever the situation or I've got to do whatever I got to do at work today. Did I get to think, you know, my job is solely driven around helping people afford life and people helping people. So joining in with us on International Credit Union um, Week. So thank you very much for that. I just had to put that little blip in there. So you may be asking, what's the difference in a credit union and a commercial bank, our for-profit brethren? Uh, there's six areas here that uh, would uh, separate us between other financial institutions and commercial banks. It's our structure, and our structure for credit union is not for-profit, and it's member-owned with a volunteer board. For a commercial bank, it's uh, for profit uh, institutions owned by stockholders, okay? So if you're a customer of a bank, you don't own the bank, the stockholders own the bank. Our clientele, our customers, our members uh, at a credit union share a common bond. So for Kinetic, our common bond is anybody that lives, works, or worships in seven counties. It could be individually, and we'll talk a little bit about TIC, but TIC started out at Fort Benning with the civilians and soldiers. For a bank, pretty much anyone can walk in the bank and open up an account. Uh, the governance structure is that we do have an elected bo uh, volunteer board of directors. Each member gets one vote. So if you have millions with us, you get one vote. If you have five dollars with us, you get one vote. Okay. Uh, with a bank, you have stockholders that pay for a board of directors and they may live in the community. They may not. And they get their votes based on the number of stock that they have. Uh, our earnings, we already talked a little bit about that, but we do use our earnings to um, offer lower loan rates, uh, higher savings rates, and to return it into more products and services for our members. Um, our commercial uh, brethren will take that and divide it up between their shareholders. Products and services and uh, service delivery, I'm going to tell you we're very, very similar with our for-profit brethren in that uh, we offer checking account, savings account, all the mobile, you know, mobile transactions, mortgages, uh, business accounts. Where we're different is credit unions are a lot smaller typically, and they cannot do the big commercial banks that, that um, commercial buildings and build outs and, and investments that, um, that our banks can do because they're so much larger. So this was us back in the day, and uh, we started out at Fort Benning, and uh, TIC, Kinetic, has been working together all these years. We started in 1956 as the Infantry Center Federal Credit Union. Do you know in a day, it's not the day today, but what Fort Benning was called at that time? The Infantry Center. Okay, so whenever we um, went through in 1956 and founded uh, Kinetic Credit Union, formerly TIC, it was driven around that name, the Infantry Center Federal Credit Union. We shortened it in the time. It was founded by the Bureau of Federal um, Credit Unions. That bureau no longer exists. We are regulated by NCUA, the National Credit Union Administration. So as the story goes, a small group of individuals, and this is these, the older people, the black and white, <laughs> were some of our founding fathers, and um, they had a need out at Credit Union, out in um, uh, Fort Benning, where uh, some of their co-workers were needing some loans. They had bad situations that would happen to them, maybe medical bills or something like that, and then they had some of their co-workers that had some excess cash. And so they decided to get together and pull the resources. And if you talk to any credit union around the country, they're going to kind of start this way. They started around the kitchen table and uh, worked out of a shoebox. 
And so that's kind of how it began. And it was pretty much just the savings and loan. Um, we had a little, um, a little guy that kind of started out as our logo. And you see the guy with the umbrella. And so it really was for uh, customers, members, as they were struggling in life through hardships, sickness, financial disasters, or whatever. And they provided, the credit union provided an umbrella to kind of help protect them through all of those. So as TIC, the Infantry Center, began to grow, you can see kind of how our logo kind of went through the changes that it did. And um, uh, each one of them means different things to the history of our credit union. And um, the most recent one we used is TIC. You can see it was Building the Future Together Today, Tomorrow, and Always. So in 1983, TIC Federal Credit Union got ready to do a cutting edge initiative at the credit union. Um, they were going to start offering share draft accounts. And I don't know if you know what a share draft account is, but it is just a checking account, a DDA account, uh, just a basic checking account. So think about that. Our banking brethren had had checking for years. Checking wasn't something new, but in credit union land, we had just gotten the authorization to be able to do that. So with a simple checking account, I had my um, bachelor's degree in accounting and finance, and I was hired as a new uh, share draft officer in a newly created position to start the share draft program. At that time, TIC had the one branch that uh, Dr. Hadley mentioned. We had just recently merged uh, Dolly Madison's credit union, and we had a little uh, office that was in a plant that they had on Victory Drive. And so we were off and running in 1983, and I was ready to conquer the world. Um, at that time, our field of membership who could join our credit union was the Fort Benning soldiers, the civilians, and the Dolly Madison employees. The credit union experienced some moderate growth, and over the next seven years, we opened Peachtree Mall. We uh, branch. We were in the mall at one time. Um, that was way before any of you <laughs> were around. And then we um, moved to the location we are today, and uh, we've redone that branch again and, and so forth. Uh, we at, began adding select employee groups. The regulators allowed us to start growing outside of Fort Benning and Dolly Madison. Ordered, uh, brought in like um, medical fields. We brought in um, the city of Columbus. We brought in a lot of different SEGs is what we call them, select employee groups to begin helping us grow. Um, during those years, one of the things that I learned, TIC was very small. Um, as you know, I didn't go in in accounting. I did not go into work there. I had the opportunity to go in as a share draft officer and figure out how to start a checking account program. So one of the things I did was I just decided I was going to take the opportunity to learn everything that I could learn. Okay, uh, We were small enough, we got to wear lots of hats. And I did get to work and learn a little bit about um, bookkeeping. I had the opportunity to do a computer conversion. At that time, uh, most financial institutions were on a service bureau where ours was in California. And it used to be kind of funny knowing the technology that you guys have at your hands today. We would always laugh and say if a bird was on the telephone line between here and California, the computers would go down for days. I mean, it was really, and they were, our, the computer rooms out there would just fill rooms that were unreal and, and so forth. But I took the opportunity to learn everything I could learn. Um, we were small enough that gave me that opportunity uh, to gain the experience to position me as a valuable asset for our credit union. So leadership um, retired. We had two retirements in leadership. And in um, 1991, the position became open again. Um, I had the experience because I just told you I'd learned everything I could possibly learn about TIC. And I had the credentials with my degree to be a serious candidate for the president and CEO of TIC. At that time, we were the 10th largest credit union in Georgia. Um, I was a female, and I was 32 years old. So to be given that opportunity, and my board of directors were retired military, to be given that opportunity, I want to tell you to begin with, was quite humbling, but it was a hard road to start proving myself that I could make a difference. So they hired me in October of 1991, and I immediately began working um, on the fast track. So... Backtrack just a little bit to give you a little bit of history. For the nine years I'd worked at TIC, uh, leadership has their ideas of the way they think an organization should run, because that's why they're in the positions. And sometimes they're open to listen to suggestions and research, and sometimes they're not. In those days, it was not as open as I feel like our organization is today. 
Um, so as I was researching and learning and as the world was changing and everything, I would talk to my bosses and I would say, you know, this is a great idea. And they said, well, no, not for us, not for us, you know, not for us. I thought, okay, well, it, we, if I ever got the opportunity to do something, I wanted to be able to recall that information. So I created, and it's really funny, I started to pull out of my little archives for you, to, a when and if file. And uh, what that taught me through the process is, and, and I hope you will gain some nuggets from this, is that when you go to your first job, or you may already be at a job, you don't always get your say. It's nice if you get, you know, you don't get your way, but you, if you could have a say. But I would encourage you, don't lose the knowledge that you're gaining as, you do, as you're doing your research. So I did a lot of reading, putting stuff in this when and if file, not knowing if I would ever get the opportunity to use it. But if I did and somebody asked me, oh, wow, you got a new idea about technology? You know, I could say, yeah, I got a file. You know, I got to go like to try to prove myself. So I did that and uh, had the opportunity in October of 1991 to use that file. And what I will tell you is for the first couple of years as a president and CEO, um, I used that file and we started building our credit union. And um, at that time, it was an ever-changing world that we were living in. And I laugh about that today because gosh knows the day is an ever-changing world and we'll talk a little bit about that. But at that time, I needed the technology to be brought into our credit union in order to get us to where we are today. So the next 10 years, brought about many changes and enhancements. Um, as the structure changed and our team changed, we began working to position TIC as the premier provider for financial services. So all of the ideas, our team was coming together, you know, what do our members want to hear? And uh, early in the process, we thought we could do a few little tweaks, Some, you know, all my wonderful reading and things that were working and my team's working together. Mm -hmm. And we quickly realized that um, we would not have what we saw as the premier um, provider of financial services with what we had in the structure at TIC. Um, we were wrong, and I think that's another lesson that you need to realize. You need to realize if you have the tools you need to go forward in life and then forward in, in a company. So looking at what um, our credit union needed for the future, we felt strongly that we needed to re-engineer and restructure our um, entire credit union. Creating a vision, and you hear probably your vision statements and so forth like that. This vision statement is what we wanted to see Kinetic, or at that time TIC, to be. And so we stepped back and resor did a lot of resourcing uh, from our members, from our employees, and just in general industry, what we wanted to do. And so um, what I will ask you, you know, probably say 10 years ago, most of you probably did it. How many did not have a checking account or say, or say a checking account 10 years ago? All right. But you went with your parents to a bank, didn't you? When you go into a bank or credit union at that time, you had teller windows. Okay. You probably had velvet ropes that you went in line so nobody got in front of you. And you got, you know, they raised their hand and they said, next, next, next. And it kind of, in our opinion, when we were going through this, it made us the authority and you just the customer. And in a credit union, you're the owner of that. And so we wanted to create a different model. And so 10 years ago, um, after all of our research, we opened up our peach tree branch was our flagship. And we do not have any teller windows in our branches. And we felt very strong about how that model would go forward. So what I would tell you, that's kind of when our journey began that we're going, to, going through now. Uh, I tell our staff it's a journey. We do not have a destination because if you have a destination, that's when you stop. Okay, because you got to where you wanted to arrive. So our culture that we went through was a change culture. And we wanted our people to be able to deal with change. It didn't matter what the change was going to be. We needed to be flexible to get through that. So our journey kind of started out with, as we were figuring out what this vision was going to look like, getting people to change. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm one that I like. I'm a perfectionist, so I like things certain ways, okay? But to deal with change, you have to to change and accept change and changes all around you. So uh, I don't know if you've had the opportunity, this has been around a while, but the book was called Who Moved My Cheese? Where we as team members could learn about how each one of us deal with change. It'd be real easy if I came in as a CEO and said, we will be doing this come October the 13th, 
you be ready, okay? That's not the philosophy that we have in our organization. We have a philosophy that we work together to develop that. So I had to create an environment where people dealt with change well and that we knew each other's strengths because, you know, because I like things a certain way and somebody else, my way is not always the right way. And uh, in some organizations, you don't always hear a CEO say that, but I will tell you, our best ideas and our strongest um, vision that we could have created came from a joint effort and working together. So I encourage you to, um, if you haven't read that book, it's a cute short little read about two, some mice going after cheese and the cheese went away and how they dealt with the, um, the oh, woe is me kind of deal. But change, you deal with it personally and professionally. How you deal with it personally will come into your environment professionally. So the next thing that we... Um, we did was we created Ideal Federal Credit Union, okay? Ideal Federal Credit Union, we created a vision to say what was in the best interest of our members where money was not an issue and people were not an issue. Now, I would just tell you any day of the week, I would give my right arm to work in an organization that money wasn't an issue and people weren't an issue, okay? So, but we had to focus on processes and to be sure we were doing what was in the best interest of our members. Then we had to get realistic, okay, because money is an issue. You cannot buy the technology that we've put in our branches and do the things that we do without addressing that. But if we were worried about the people, and um, those of you that may have families that have been in the business, whatever, well, Sue has been with us 30 years and Sue will not change. Well, in our organization, we helped Sue change or we wished her well because we were moving forward in our, our model. Our staff had created the vision that we were going, going through. Uh, we worked in a number of different resources, studied a lot of things, but one of the books that I hold dearest in uh, a lot of our transformation is Good to Great. And it's a Jim Collins book. And Jim Collins is one of those that has a statement that says, good companies will never become great companies because they're too comfortable in being good, okay? We took our credit union, broke it down and tore it up when we were at the top of our game, okay? But we were at the top of the game for a short period of time because vision-wise, we knew industry was changing, okay? So remember that in, in looking at good companies, you never become great because you get so comfortable in good and the processes that you're doing. So that's a good, good read for you. It's, a, um, it's, a, it's not as easy as Who Moves My Cheese, but it gives you a lot of good information that is being used, and he's wrote several more that complement that. But the big idea here was to, that you use your team that you have, you get everybody on the bus, and you get the people in the right seats on the bus. We had people that were working for us that no, long, that no more needed to be in that position, but they'd been there 30 years. We had to find ways to retrain them to get them in the right seats. Um, we decided to re-energize our staff and to restructure what we had to do. Um, we felt like re-energizing and re-engineering um, re our credit would be vital to our growth and our success for the future. Um, we looked outside of our industry. Credit unions are not known for being creative and forward thinking. Uh, we looked at our banking brethren to see what they were doing. We did not find a lot of them that were going through some changes that we were doing. So we started looking at other institutions and trying to find companies out there around the country that had made change initiatives in their organization. And so we wanted to look at it and learn what they, what they had gone through, learn from their mistakes, and their recommendations of what we could do better. So we created a, um, a CRM, which was Customer Relationship Management. At that time, CRM was known for a computer system, kind of computer systems pulling together. Ours wasn't computer. Computers were only a small part of what we felt was important. What we learned is that communication, 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 my little marketing buddy back there, his wife, communication, communication, they just said they could never do communication enough to get where they wanted to go. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. You had to look at structures and processes, your sales culture, your branding, your training. Training is critical to get a team through um, this and your customer strategy. And technology was kind of last. It kind of complemented um, that everything we did. We introduced that to our staff in 2002. And, um, and when I step back and think about the work that was done, it's quite remarkable to know that we didn't start a company from the beginning. 
We re-engineered the company we had. We used the resources we had. We had people to think different and to move forward with us. Uh, I will be real honest with you. Um, some people did not want to move with us, and that's okay. That was, it doesn't mean that they were right and we were wrong or we were right and they were wrong. It just meant that, they, that we were not going to be the right fix for them. So it did take a lot of work. And um, in 2003, as we were working through this, and probably some of y'all were just beginning school in 2003 and thinking and learning uh, about everything, we had to think differently to get our uh, foot into technology. Uh, I look at the little kids today and, you know, I've got some three and four year old little friends that can work an iPhone better than I ever thought about working it. And you get them to help program it an iPad, let them play a game. And they were even talking about on the news yesterday morning about putting some apps on there so that they could, you know, they wouldn't be buying things. And I'm thinking, you know, how does a three year old, four year? But technology at that time looked a lot different. But the uh, common thread about re-engineering and re, um, restructuring our organization was the communication and how crucial it was. To lead a team through um, reorganization and restructuring, you have to communicate with them uh, along the journey. It's very important for them to understand where you're going and um, what it was going to look like and what was going to be expected of them. So we created a vision, okay, and um, that vision that we've been talking about was we wanted to empower employees with the knowledge and confidence to give world-class sales and service based on member needs. We had made the decision that we didn't want a teller window, that we were the superior, you were the customer. We wanted to have a needs-based sales approach. Okay, and that needs-based sales approach, um, in our industry, we talked about used car salespeople. They're just pushy, 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 you know, and you got to go through all the, the hoops and whatever they do. They're great people. They've got a business to run, but that's not the business that we wanted to run. We wanted to do needs-based selling. Um, we wanted a branch environment that would give the members the time, the time and tools they needed and our employees the time and tools to work with them to see the total member picture. Now, well, that's now 10 years ago. Uh, we didn't have systems that talked to each other. So you had one system that would tell you this is the balance. You had another system that says you had this and another. And so we needed to create the technology to pull all that together. And then we wanted to um, deliver a consistent member experience across all delivery channels. So back in the early 2000s, the delivery channels were checking accounts, checks, uh, savings accounts. Um, we'd have a call center. I uh, had a little bit of, you know, like an, a website, but didn't have any interactive things. We use these same vision today and want to be sure our touch points are consistent across all um, points. So if you walk into our branch today, we have no barriers. Uh, our members are um, opened and welcomed into our home. We treat our branches like they're your homes. And uh, it's an open air, high tech uh, design. There's no doors on offices. Um, we have no traditional teller windows. We have interactive teller stations. Uh, our employees greet you at the door. They shake your hand. They make you feel welcome into um, our branches. And hopefully in a way that you feel comfortable letting us help you guide your whatever you need from us to get through life. Um, we have technology bars. We have um, kids' play areas. We have free Wi-Fi. Just all technology-driven because we realize that your generation, you no longer want what we've had in our generation. It served, it, banking traditions have served us for years, hundreds of years. But we know that to, to get to the millennials and the next generations, that we've got to be there with the technology. And so we're very proud of that. We call our branch a dialogue branch because we want to dialogue with you. We don't want to be there. What do you want? $5. Here's your $5. Go out the door. We don't want that. We want to talk with you a little bit. Sure, you want $5? Well, great. You know, and we go through a dialogue process and hope that we can discover some things that you might would want in a comfortable environment that it's not pushy, it's needs-based, um, which creates an experience. So when you go and do something, you may not remember that you got the $5, okay? If it was a bad experience and your count was negative, uh, and we didn't give you that $5, it's a negative experience. We want a positive experience when you walk into our home and into our branches. So experience journey, the experience model is what all of this has led to into where we are today. Okay, so our credit union is looked at by our peers as, as pretty progressive. We are um, a small credit union uh, in comparison to our brethren in Atlanta. We have Delta's credit union is about six billion with a B. We're, we're 300 million with an M. In our community, locally owned, we are the largest credit union that's local. And so we're very proud of that. Um, they do look at us as cutting edge. And as we were going through this journey, we've had a lot of visitors from around the country to come look at us, just like what we went and looked at. Um, when we opened our Peachtree branch in 2006, 
We've opened five more branches since then in this model. Um, it didn't happen overnight. Getting your people through it didn't happen overnight. Building the buildings didn't happen overnight. Um, we worked really hard to be sure that we transitioned our culture to deliver this kind of um, uh, experience model. One thing that also happened during this time is that we got our community charter. We serve seven counties, four in Georgia and three in Alabama. Um, remember, uh, with a credit union, you have to fit in a field of membership to walk in the door. With a bank, anybody can open up account, but we are family, we're members, you're owners of that. So that was a big um, launching point for some growth that we had and uh, focusing on that. So we continue to focus on our customer experience and our dialogue um, branch and trying to prepare ourselves for um, whatever may come in front of us. Um, I'm gonna give you an example that this change and what we did and our people were so flexible and nimble. Uh, during 2008 and the recession that we had, um, most of you probably remember that. You've been studying about that. A lot of uh, too big to fails. A lot of banks are no longer in business. Those were TIC at the time's best years financially we'd ever had. And we continue to build on that. And I'm going to attribute a lot of that to my team. And my team prepared to be flexible, nimble, and do whatever you take, whatever it takes. Um, I like to sign like my three A's and so forth. I like to um, put a little some spin on it, something fun. We had plan wit. And, uh, you know, it was a sad time in our country's history, but you had to find some humor. You had to find some passion about what we were trying to do to get through. But Plan Wit stood for whatever it takes. And so my team committed, no matter what it took, to get through that. And we came out stronger on this side of it when a lot of our bank brethren are no longer here or they've had a lot of mergers in it. So that has been one of the things that I attribute um, our change mindset and our journey that we're on and being prepared for that. Because if we were comfortable in being good, we were a good credit union. We would never get to great because we would have probably been one of those that had um, struggled during that recession and coming through that. Socrates has a, um, a saying that I just love, and it's, it, it goes like this. The secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. You guys are young enough that everything's new and you're adventurous and you're, you're, I mean, you're in the right place at Columbus State University trying to move forward with that. But as you get into a career, a lot of times you get stuck in your way and your processes and you don't want to change. I always go back and remember that little quote there, do not fight change because the only thing that's constant in the world is what? Change. So fast forward to 2014. So TIC was progressive and we had done this new model. Our peers thought we were really wonderful and all those things. Um, we started looking at our brand and um, you do surveys in, in, in businesses and get feedback and all that's really wonderful. We did that and you have to be careful what you get. Uh, we got feedback that nobody knew what TIC stood for. Okay, so I told you earlier, do you remember? The Infantry Center, okay, but most people didn't know that. And we even polled our military brethren, and uh, they didn't know what it stood for. And furthermore, Fort Benning changed their name to the Maneuver Center of Excellence. So we were a great progressive company that had this wonderful logo that I showed you that was kind of old, outdated. And we just really felt passionate about our name and that we'd done so much branding in the market. And we got told it didn't, it wasn't working. And so we stepped back and decided, okay, well, if that's the case, then we gotta, we got to figure out a way to move forward with that. And we uh, hired a company to come in and help us to do um, the research, and we created a, our strategic marketing plan. And uh, with that, we became, uh, TIC became Kinetic Credit Union. And the one thing, I don't know if you've noticed, but we were really um, strong about keeping our heritage at Fort Benning and our pride in Fort Benning. And uh, Kinetic is energy. I mean, that's just what the word means. We feel like our branches are energetic. Everything looks a little different. Um, but we kept TIC at the end of it. I don't know if you noticed that, but we, that is our heritage, and we feel very proud to be able to have had a name that identifies us through the research that um, keeps um, TIC in there. We're over 41,000 uh, members, 140 employees, seven branches, 26 in, uh, ATMs, and over 300 million in assets. Uh, Kinetic is energized banking, and I know you've seen our billboards and our commercials and as we've come out and unveiled with that. So in talking about this trans, uh, transition, and I told you Jim, Jim Collins' good to great book said you have to get the people on the bus and the right seats on the bus, we call that a roadmap. 
And so the only way that you can be on a bus and know where you're going is if you have a road map. And nowadays you use uh, <laughs> Google or, you know, things in your GPS in your car or whatever you want to do. But back in the day, there were old road, road maps. And so we created a road map that we wanted everybody to uh, have. Um, one of the things I tell my people, and I would encourage you guys to not think like this, is that if you are a widget putter owner, now, that is a Janet Davis made up word. If you want to come to work, work every day and just do widgets, okay, kinetic's not going to be the place for you because we want you to know where the widget came from and we want you to know where it goes. And then you're going to be the best darn widget putter on there, okay? That's just our philosophy. And I tell my empl new employees that if that's what you want to do, that's great. But you're going to really struggle here because if you don't know where that widget came from and where it's going, you're not going to be the best that you could possibly be. So we created a core, and um, this is our roadmap. You say, well, that doesn't look like a traditional road. It's got some colors in it like maybe a roadmap. But uh, it means a lot to our employees. Uh, we have a strategic plan like all companies do, but we wanted a visual so that those employees could see on a daily basis um, how we get through where we're going with our strategic plan. We have a vision, mission, and values around the outside, uh, major initiatives, focus goals, um, Division goals, and you can kind of see how that all flows around. Our vision is to have a financial relationship with every household in our community. We want to do it by bettering our members' lives is our mission, and our values are integrity, excellence, service, passion, and balance. So you can kind of see that, but the most important part of that, all that's really important because that drives us down the road, but in the center of that is our staff. And our staff is the heartbeat of our organization. And you can see the little blue lines that are in there. It's the stitching that keeps us together. So um, you, whatever position you go into as you get your career, please understand that you will be the heartbeat of an organization. And you may only be the one that doesn't beat with everybody else, but it has to be to move forward with that. So I encourage you all um, to have your roadmap, know where you're going to be the best darn widget putter owner you can possibly be. Um, so these are branches. We have seven. You can kind of see around um, the community and know what those look like. Maybe. <laughs> there you go. All right. And then in here, um, this shows you a graph. Just lets you know a little bit about what we've done. In 06, when we opened up our dialogue, you can see where we had exponential growth and what we've been doing, and uh, we have big growth plans. This has been an incredible year for us growth-wise, and um, we want to continue moving forward with that. Uh, our employees and the glider are really an important part of our messaging. This is part of that messaging that we were talking about before we started here. Um, it's a free-flowing uh, movement. It's a banking experience that guides our members through every stage of life. The triangles represent building blocks of personal prosperity. Our employees pr uh, proudly commit to creating core elements of financial dreams and soaring trails of plans in motion. So uh, that's the marketing. If any of you are marketing people, uh, that the marketing people put together for us. And our employees feel very proud to be gliders. And uh, we have a brand culture. Um, this is what it looks like. And I think with what we've talked about today, you know that um, um, that's a heartbeat from the CEO down. Uh, you see passionate in there. We're, pro we're progressive, inspirational, professional. Um, our culture, this tells you a little bit about, we've talked about that a little bit and that, you know, we shake hands, we smile, we want to go deeper to try to help you understand what you need and, uh, and to help you achieve those goals and that we serve each member. And it is an honor to get to serve our members and our customers. Um, another component of this is, um, that makes us successful is community involvement. Uh, we believe that if you understand service and helping others, that you will understand what service and helping people financially is about. These are some uh, organizations that we are work currently working with. And what I will tell you is that um, we have a group of, of employees that work together to create each year what we do. We just did Paint the Town Pink a couple weeks ago with that 5K. Uh, our employee appreciation, we went and planted trees for Trees Columbus. Um, CMN is one of the big credit union ones that we raise uh, hundreds of millions of dollars for CMN as a credit union industry. So you can kind of see that. Uh, I do believe that in order to um, provide service that you have to understand in helping others. Um, partners in education are a big part of um, what we do. And uh, we are really proud to be the partner in education with WRBL and the 2 of 58 with Lloyd. We've won Partnership of the Year. This is a Chamber of Commerce um, 
initiative. Uh, we've won projects of the year. Unfortunately, because of the military cuts and what they're doing, this is its last year, and it just breaks our heart. Lloyd will be closing at the end of the year, but I want to tell you, uh, we, we participate in one of the things that we do is a leadership class with the children and to try to help them become leaders and speakers. And so when, when they're in college and taking that speech class, think, oh my God, I don't want to speak in front of anybody. They learn it at an earlier age, but we're very proud to be a part of that. So you may want to ask what I do in uh, participating in, in addition to all the community involvement. Uh, our board has allowed me to do a lot of incredible things and be a part of a lot of things. Um, Dr. Hadley talked about my rotary, and I'm very proud of that and being a part of that. I am on the audit committee at the Pastoral Institute. Um, the MEF, she talked a little bit about that. We do Teacher of the Year, so we're getting ready for that gala in May. Um, we send an, a qualified teachers to Harvard during the summer. We raise all kinds of monies to reward our public educators. Um, they are an incredible group of people. And I started working with this group probably about eight or nine years ago. I do not have children. I didn't talk a lot about me personally, but I don't have children and I'm not married and have never been married. All those good things. I had not been in a school system in gosh knows how long. And uh, get the opportunity to see what these teachers and to walk in there and see what the teachers do. It's incredible. So that's kind of the local level. A couple other things. One of the really important ones that I want to mention to you is Columbus State University. Uh, I am a proud alumni, but I also contribute back. Um, I do a lot with the Tower Society. Tower Society, we donate money uh, for the honors, um, and I'm on the honors advisory council. We're really getting that little board up now. Do a lot with athletics and raising funds for them. We just did girls in the game um, back in the earlier spring. Uh, just do a lot of things with Columbus State. I am uh, on the foundation, on the trustees. Just a lot of wonderful things. Um, the school has richly blessed me in a lot of ways and in my career, and I do believe as the community involvement with my staff, you give back. Um, one of the other things that, that I, Dr. Hadley talked about, the affiliates is our trade organization for credit unions at the state level. Um, I've been on all those boards and chaired all those. Uh, at the national level, I've been on boards and chaired those. One, though, that I think that because it's International Credit Union Day that might be interesting to you is this scope in the middle of it. 20 years ago, in, Jan in June, we just celebrated our 20th anniversary. In Poland, Lefa Winza wanted, as the communism failed, wanted a, a banking system that was a cooperative. And so Georgia Credit Unions went in, and we started a credit union over in Poland. And it is a thriving credit union. It's doing tremendous work. And it is about grassroots bringing up uh, financial institutions. And I'm very proud to be a part of that and, um, uh, and to see the progress that they have made. So this is Kinetic. We talked a little bit about that uh, and what all that means. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about Columbus State and springboarding. Uh, for you and your success. I think Columbus State and what you're doing today and being in school is the most important thing that you could possibly ever do. Uh, I know you know that or you, you wouldn't be here. But what I will also tell you is that um, it is not the wherewithal to be the end. It's just the beginning. And it is the uh, diving board, springboard that gets you going and where you're going with that. Uh, I have another saying that I love. By failing to prepare... You are preparing to fail. And that's a Benjamin uh, Franklin quote. And what I think that tells me is that while you have begun to plan a little bit, if you think this is the end of it, um, your eyes need to open up wide because it's just the beginning. Because you, if you do not plan to make yourself a well-rounded candidate, people like me are not going to want to hire you. Okay, and it doesn't mean you had a 4.0 and you look really good on paper and everything, but if you don't have the experience that goes with that, it makes it very difficult to have a well-rounded employee. I've shared all the inner secrets of our credit union, how important community involvement is, all the things that you have to do. If you're not involved in, in those extra activities, it does not tell us a lot about you. It just tells us academically you completed you know, your studies, you completed a personal goal, you got your degree, but it did not allow for any other... Um, how you developed as a team. Could you work with a team? Uh, could you work in a company like mine that is all about change? Are you willing to be doing something today and tomorrow? We're going down a different path toward that journey that we're creating. Um, if you are involved in extracurricular activities and working with that career and developing that plan, that's going to be very, very important. So um, moving forward, we want you to have confidence when you leave Columbus State University, but it's not cockiness, okay? Because I know when I started, I thought, man, I got this degree. Everybody ought to want me. 
Well, I couldn't get an accounting degree. I had to get my foot in a door. So there's a lot of ways you can get your foot in the door. You have to stand out. So I'm going to give you a couple of things that um, might would help you in keeping the uh, balance. And uh, CSU does a tremendous job. And uh, I encourage you, if you're not already involved in other activities, I know some of our people in here are um, in sports and some other areas. But this um, this is from the CSUinvolved.com worksite. It's inspiring things that are going on on campus. Get involved in this. And I will also tell you, pick one. You may not have time for multiples of it, but at least pick one because it will tell a potential employer a lot about you. Um, the other thing that might would happen, you say, well, you know, I may have to work like you did. I had to pay for my college or whatever. Work tells people that are going to hire you your potential of what you can do because you're already learning to work for a boss. You're learning um, to put together things and to, to be the best widget putter owner that you could possibly possibly have. I got an example that I, I want to share with you that kind of reemphasizes this because you may do fraternity degree life you may do a lot of difference but I'm gonna use the athletics because that was one that's Choose near and dear to, to my heart. You found a passion for your sport. You work really hard for that and you've stuck with it. Employers are impressed with that dedication. Employers know that athletes manage their time well. Now that translates into any of these other activities. Student athletes have a lot of responsibilities. They have classes, they have studying, strength training, conditioning, practicing travel and games. They have had the toughest bosses ever around and that's their coach. They've also learned to be a highly organized individual making that happen. They have strong relationships and communication skills because they have to communicate to their team members. And in the workplace, that, that, that translates into an employee who understands that you don't always win, but you can uh, always work for winning in some situations. So most, and I won't ask any of our athletes that are in here that I got to meet a little bit ago, but you lose more games and you lose more than you ever win, but you never give up. You always have the passion to go forward. And as an employee, you always have to have the passion to move forward with what you're doing. That can translate into community involvement. That can tr translate into um, uh, internships, anything that you want to get involved in. So when you go to sell yourself, because the grades are going to get the door in there, get your foot in the door, when you get ready to sell yourself, they will know more about you. You can talk more about uh, than just your education and your classes that you want to do. So as I encourage you to just jump start and get involved in your career, I would tell you as you go forward, create that plan because that plan is going to tell you where you want to go. You can't get to your graduation then all of a sudden say, wow, I needed to have that community involvement. Wow, I needed to have found my passion in sports. Wow, I needed to have done that internship because now a potential employer is going to be asking you. So we're going to be looking for well-rounded employees. Okay, so I kind of um, went through that pretty quick, but I felt it was really important for you to kind of get there. Do you have any questions that you might want to ask me at this time before we get ready to close? I hope I didn't put you all to sleep. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We saw it coming. We saw it coming. It's pretty much a bubble with the housing, okay, and with the sand states and all of the other things that went in. We saw that coming in into it. We're very conservative. Credit unions typically are very conservative, so we were not into those um, subprime mortgages and some of those um, where they were giving people 130% of the value and they were doing some of the crazy financing. So um, I would tell you we were preparing it. We were seeing it coming up. We were being sure our portfolio was very strong and to ensure we went through that. So we, um, we didn't have any losses in our mortgage portfolio at all. Related to that question, your, your chart of growth, the only year we was down was 2004. What can you say what happened? 2004, we were re-engineering and getting ready to go forward with where we were going with that. We had to make some changes in what we were doing and it kind of to get a spring started. So yeah, that was kind of, and it was also the writing we were seeing on the wall. If we were not making changes, that was probably where we were going to be going. So yeah, that was a little dip with that. Sebastian. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Your firm is mostly about change. Now, how do you motivate your employees to cope with change or, you know, agree with change, if you will. I mean, most people like um, things to stay the way they are. How, how do you... How do, you how do we motivate them to, to change? 
One of the things that I think we do really well is communication. Did I tell you communication is really important? Yes. We get their input as we're getting ready to go through change. Okay, we know we need to, in like 04, we knew things were beginning to change. We saw that a couple of years before. We started talking with them, not knowing where we were going to go, but gave them the vision. So they knew change was coming. Um, the other things that we do, and we do it now, we've, just had, we've, had some, um, we've got a tremendous year coming out for next year, some new technology and some new things that we're going to enhance our branches, open some new branches and so forth. And so we've already started telling them what's coming, what it looks like. I don't know 100% what it's going to look like because we're designing it, we're developing it. If you're reading and you have a when and if file, share it with us. Okay, because I can go out and research, but I might like to look at, I might like to look in this little magazine here. You may like to go online and look at things. So if we pull all that together, so we really engage our employees, we communicate with them. Um, ultimately, it's my say, you know, and I do realize that they respect it and they know it's my say or whatever. But I'm going to tell you, I'm not the smartest person in the room. The smartest thing that I can do is to engage people to help make that happen. So that's how we get through change. Um, does everybody like it? No. Uh, earlier on, it was really a struggle, you know, trying to get who moved my cheese and all that good stuff. Now that's just like when we get ready to have a staff meeting, it's like, oh, something new and exciting. They really love to come because they just know that we are a progressive organization. Anybody else? All right. Well, I would be remiss if, um, if as I'm going through this and finishing up, if I don't tell you um, the financial side of your future and Kinetic uh, and what we do and helping you and creating solutions for you. So if there's anything that we can ever do at Kinetic Credit Union to help you see energized banking, by all means, please visit one of our branches. It is not going to be your traditional banking environment. Hopefully you will not feel that way. We know that our, we strive for consistency across all models and we would love to um, help navigate your future with it, uh, the financial part. Um, in closing, what I want to say to you is that um, life is hard. And I think my example of where I came from and how I went through, and I had nine years at TIC that I just didn't feel appreciated, um, I, I stuck with it and I got the experience. Nobody can take away the knowledge you're getting at Columbus State or whatever experience you're getting. Take that and build on it and go forward with that. There are a lot of things you can't control in the world. Just a lot of things. And I am a control freak and I love to control everything. But the only three things I can control is my attitude, my aptitude, and I will soar with great altitude. Um, I will tell you, you need to be passionate about whatever you're studying because when you get up in the morning and it's raining and you just don't want to go to work, you got to have a passion. And, you know, mine is helping people, so it resonates uh, with me. You say, well, you're an accounting major. Well, that's great. I got the opportunity to develop that, and I, I certainly understand my accounting and finance and what it did to springboard me. But plan to win. And if you plan to win and you have a plan, you will succeed. You may not get to the highest altitudes that an eagle can soar, but you're going to be right up there with them. And then you will be soaring with that. The only constant in life is change. And I, I did this slide to my staff this last time we had a meeting uh, earlier in the month. And... Um, because we're getting ready to introduce some more change, talk about change and so forth. Uh, change is all around us and it doesn't matter how you embrace it. But if you can be a pessimist and if you want us to do that, you can complain about it. OK, you can be an optimist. And I always thought myself as being an optimist. And I looked at everything through rose colored glasses and I know change is coming. But you got to be a realist and realist means you got to adjust the sales. So as you go through your life career plans, your education or whatever, things aren't going to work out. You can sit back and complain about it, and woe is me. You can know that changes are going to happen, and woe is me. Or you can do something about it and adjust yourself. And I encourage you all to adjust yourself. Life is a fabulous thing. We are blessed to be here on this earth to live, to give back to others. And I wish you all the best as you go through your career. Uh, I remember my college days very favorably and thinking, oh, gosh, it was just an overwhelming experience trying to get through where I'm going. When I look back 34 years ago and look forward 34 years, it looks totally different. And it's because of a lot of factors that we've discussed today. So if I can ever help you in any way, uh, please, please feel free to call me. You can email me. The School of Business has all of my information. Um, if we ever have the opportunity to help you financially, by all means, uh, my people are incredible people and they love what they're doing and they share the passion that I have for the industry. So thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the best.